So I've done a few of these crash course type videos in the past. A while ago I did one for Arduino and the ESP32 controlling LEDs and things like that. Then more recently I did another one for soldering to teach people the basics of that to make it easier for people to jump in and start making the kinds of projects that I like to show on my channel. Today's video is going to be about 3D modeling with Fusion 360. So if you've ever wanted to create your own designs for 3D printing, this one's for you. All right, so before we get into it, a couple of things that I wanna get out of the way. And the first thing is that I am not an expert at this by any means. There are a lot of people out there who do this kind of thing day in and day out for their full-time job. That's not me. I'm completely self-taught with some help from YouTube, like I imagine a lot of you guys are. But honestly, that's kind of one of the things that I wanted to drive home with this video is that you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to have a ton of training. With just some basic working knowledge of the fundamentals, pretty much anybody can jump in and start making some pretty useful stuff right away. That said, if you are somebody who does CAD work professionally or if you're just an expert at using Fusion 360 and if you see me doing something incorrectly or whatever, feel free to jump in the comments and let me know. Just be nice about it. I will link to some really good resources and other YouTubers that you should definitely check out uh, in a blog post that I'll link to in the description. So in this video, first I'm going to cover some basic operations and concepts that you're going to need to know for pretty much any design that you'll be working on. Then I'll build on that and show you how to make a simple phone or tablet stand. And then I'll take everything a few steps further and show you how to build a shell around an existing part like a Raspberry Pi. Now this is going to be a longer video and there's really just no way around that, but to hopefully Hopefully make it a little bit more manageable, I'll put some timestamps in the description so you can jump around to different parts of the video. I'll also include exports of Fusion 360 projects for everything that I'm going to show you today so you can download those and open them up and follow along if you want. Also, I've got a couple of designs that I never got around to sharing with you guys, so I'm going to put those up on Patreon for supporters to download and then here in a couple of weeks I'll put them up on Thingiverse for everybody else. So anyway, with all that out of the way, let's get started. Okay, so let me show you around a little bit. Here at the top are a bunch of buttons and they'll actually change uh, depending on what you're doing. So it's kind of like Photoshop in that regard and it can be a little bit confusing. Uh, but honestly, I barely ever need to touch these buttons at all. And I'll show you a few tricks to avoid even having to look at them. There are some menus in here that I do dig into from time to time uh, to see if there's any tools that are maybe better suited for what I'm doing or anything that I didn't know existed. So those are worth digging through for sure. Here on the left is the project tree. So you get a few things by default, like the origin here with planes for the X and Y axis, X and Z and Y and Z axes. And then any bodies that we create, any sketches that we create, anything like that will get added to this tree. Uh, so you're gonna be using that a lot. Here at the bottom is the timeline and every little thing that we do, every operation is gonna show up as a separate icon here at the bottom. So this can be really handy to roll back the timeline to a certain point if you want to uh, undo some changes or if you wanna go back and edit an operation that you did a little while back. You'll see what I mean here in just a few minutes. Up at the top right is this cube for changing your perspective. You can click on it and drag it around like this or you can click on one of the sides to quickly jump to the top or any of the sides like that. Um, and then at the bottom here are a few controls for toggling how it rotates and things like that. If you click with the middle mouse button and drag around, it'll pan around like this. And then if you hold shift and click the middle mouse button and drag, then it'll rotate like this. So when you start a project from scratch like this, most of the time, the first thing that you're gonna do is add a sketch. And a sketch is exactly what it sounds like. It's a 2D drawing uh, that you can create 3D geometry from. So I'll go ahead and click that, and now it's asking where I wanna create that sketch. You can create sketches on planes, like these three that it gives us by default, uh, but you can also add them to the face of an existing model. I'm gonna create this on the X and Y axis plane. So now you can see that our buttons here at the top changed to drawing mode. So we can add lines, we can add rectangles, circles, curves, and things like that. I'm gonna make a center rectangle, and I could get to it through this menu right here, uh, but what I normally do is just press the S key on the keyboard and that brings up a search box. So I can start to type in center rectangle and there we go. Now I didn't have to dig through that menu or anything like that. And that's just a really quick way to find stuff is by pressing S and then start typing what you're looking for. So uh, this is a center rectangle. So you need to specify the point for the center of it. I'm gonna click on the origin. You can drag to tell it how big to make each side or you can type it in directly. 
So I'm gonna make this 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. So now you can see this inner region here is shaded light blue. So that means that it's a totally contained region of the sketch, meaning that there are lines going all the way around it and I can select that region if I want to. So just to show you, if I press L to go into line mode, I can create a line from here to down here. So now I could select this region or this region. So anyway, I'll select that and now I'm gonna press E for extrude. So this is where it's actually gonna create some 3D geometry based on this sketch. And from here, you can either drag this arrow out or you can type in a measurement directly. So I'm gonna type in 20 millimeters there and you have a few options over here on the right. And you'll notice as you select different tools to do different operations, this box will pop up with some different parameters that you can enter in. So the one that I wanna show you is the direction. By default, it's just one side like this, uh, but you can also select two sides if for some reason you wanted to maybe pull the other side out a different amount. But then you can also do symmetric. So I'm gonna enter in 10 millimeters here, and so that's gonna pull it out 10 millimeters on either side. So now I've got a 3D cube here. Now this was actually a really inefficient way uh, to create a cube. If you look at the create menu up here, you can actually add primitives like boxes and cylinders and spheres and things like that really easily. But I wanted to demonstrate how you can create a sketch and then extrude things from that. That's one of the most common operations that you'll find yourself doing. And also just to point out down here at the bottom, you can see the timeline is starting to fill in. So I can grab this bar over here on the right and drag it back if I want to. So now all we've got is our sketch and then drag it back uh, to the end so it redoes everything. And then if I want to change anything, if I want to jump back into that sketch, I have a couple of ways that I can do that. I can either click on it down here in the timeline or like I said earlier, this project tree starts to get filled in as you add things to it. So now we've got our sketch here and then we've also got uh, the body that we created by extruding from that sketch. And you can show and hide things by clicking that eye icon next to them. Okay, so let's add another sketch here. And this time I'm going to rotate it and make this sketch on the bottom of that cube. Let's add a circle to it. The shortcut for that is C. You've also got this button up here that you can use to get to it or use that search box that I was telling you about earlier. So that's one thing that you'll find is there are several different ways uh, to get at things within this app. I'll click the origin here once again to make it in the middle and I'm gonna type in 10 millimeters for the diameter of this circle. So now there are two regions on this sketch. There's the inner portion where I created this circle, but then there's also the outer portion as well. So I'm gonna select this circle and I'm gonna press E to extrude that. So if I drag this down, uh, then it will add this shape onto this cube. It'll all be part of the same body. Um, but then if I drag it up inside of the cube, you can see over here, it automatically switched to a cut operation. So I'll go ahead and press OK on that just so that you can see it. Um, and now we've cut that hole out of there. That's not actually what I wanna do though. I'm gonna drag this out. Let's make it stick out by 10 millimeters. One other thing to note here is you can change this operation to new body. Um, and so if I hit OK with that, if you notice another body appears over here on the project tree. So now if I wanted to, I could export those separately and print them out separately. But that's not actually what I wanna do. I'll go back and change that back to join. So a couple of more operations that I wanna show you that I find myself using in almost every design that I work on. Uh, the first one is a chamfer. So I'll press S to bring up the search box, start to type in chamfer, and there it is. So what this does, you can select some edges. I'll select the top ones here and then you can drag this arrow and you can see what it's doing. It's kind of uh, cutting around those edges at an angle. So this can be really useful for um, just making things look nice, but it also has some real useful properties to it that I'll show you here in just a second, especially for 3D printing. Uh, but there's one important option here. Um, by default, it does an equal distance chamfer, uh, which means that it does it at a 45 degree angle. Uh, but if I wanted to, I could do two distances. So I could cut four millimeters down and let's say two millimeters in. So I'm gonna change that back to equal distance and let's say two millimeters. So the other thing that you can do with the chamfer operation, uh, so I'll bring that up again and I'm gonna select the outer edge of this circle here on the bottom. So now what I can do is drag this outwards and you can see it's actually adding material to it instead of cutting it away. So this can be really useful, not so much here, but uh, let's say that for some reason I really needed to print this part with this circle at the bottom 
uh, on the build plate of the printer. And I'm gonna drag this back on the timeline to show it without it. So let's say that I printed it with this circle flat against the build plate on the printer. I would need a bunch of support all around here because when you're printing something, obviously you can't just print on air, so it's gonna need some support material there. But if I add this chamfer here, that makes it so that I could print this without any supports at all. Now, depending on what you're making, that's not always gonna be an option to you, but it's something that I've used uh, pretty often to make it so that I don't need support on things. Let me show you an example here real quick. So this is the giant Game Boy that I've been working on for way, way too long at this point. And so these parts of the shell here, uh, I wanted to print them vertically. Well, there are a bunch of screw posts on the inside uh, that if they didn't have that chamfer, they'd need a bunch of support material uh, to be able to print them. But by adding those chamfers, it makes it so that it can print them without any supports at all. And you can see I kind of use that same trick up here at the top and over here to cut down on the amount of support that I need by quite a bit. So again, it's not something that works every time depending on what you're making, uh, but it's a handy trick to keep in mind as you're designing things. I really need to get back and finish this project. The last tool that I wanna make sure that you see is called a fillet. So you can either press F to bring it up or you can bring up the search box and type in fillet. And yeah, I know it's spelled the same way as the cooking term, but uh, in CAD world, it is pronounced fillet. Uh, so same thing as the chamfer, I'm gonna select a few edges here and now I can drag this arrow inwards and it does kind of the same thing, except it's doing it with a nice rounded corner. So again, I use this all the time just to make things look nicer, but you'll run into situations where it can help making a part quite a bit stronger as well. So let's say for some reason I needed this to be quite a bit stronger, I could add a fillet at this point to taper that. So now we got rid of that hard angle, so this will be quite a bit stronger. All right, so those are a few basic operations that you'll find yourself using in nearly every single design that you work on. All right, so I've got an empty project here now. Uh, let's make something a little more interesting. Let's make a phone stand. So first thing I'm gonna do as usual is create a new sketch, and I'm gonna make that again on the X and Y axis. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of roughly sketch out uh, the shape of this thing. So I'm gonna press L to bring up the line tool. That's also this button up here. So I'm gonna hide the origin here by clicking on that eye. Uh, let's see, how do I wanna do this? I want it to go kinda like that. I'm gonna want that bottom corner to be lined up with the origin. Uh, it'll come up like this, over and then back down. So all of the lines you see are blue, and what that means is that they have no constraints to them. So I can click the different points and the different lines and I can drag them around as I please. That's not very exact or precise for modeling things to print out. So what we need to do is we need to add some constraints to them uh, to tell it how long each line should be, uh, maybe what angle it should be at relative to another line, things like that. While we're in the sketch mode here, I'm gonna press D and that'll bring up the sketch dimension tool. So first, I'm gonna say that I want this guy here. I just click on that line and drag out a little bit. And I'm gonna say that I want that to be 10 millimeters long. Now this line, I can drag around this point and that will stay 10 millimeters long. I'm gonna press D again, only this time I'm gonna click on this line and then click on this line. So now you can see that it's letting me uh, add a constraint on that for what this angle between these two lines should be. So I'll click out there and I want that to be 90 degrees. And once you add constraints, by the way, uh, you can drag these things around to make it a little bit easier to read as well. Uh, next, I'm gonna tell how long to make this line. Press D again and then click on that line. I think 13 millimeters was what I measured on my phone. And then I'm gonna add another angle between this line and this line uh, to make that 90 degrees as well. Okay, so that's starting to look a little bit better. These things are kind of locked in place now. So as you're sketching things out like you just saw me do, uh, sometimes it will be smart enough to add constraints for you. So for example, this right here means that this line should always be horizontal. So I can click this point and drag it around and you see that that line uh, always stays horizontal. So I'll say that I want this piece to be let's say 10 millimeters as well. I'm going to add another line, but this is gonna be a special line. So I've got my line tool up here and I'm gonna click this button over here to tell it that I wanna make a construction line. So now I can click this point here and drag it over to meet up with this line over here. So this line is dashed and what that means is that it's a construction line. So it doesn't actually play any role in making those regions that I can extrude or anything like that, but you can still use them for adding constraints 
uh, and measuring things, lining things up, those kinds of things. Select that line and then toggle that button again. You can see that that region gets shaded so I could extrude that if I wanted to. And now I can press D to bring up the dimension tool and click this line and this line. And let's say that I want it to be 60 degrees. Oh, it was really close already. There. Okay, looking pretty good. Now all that I need to do is tell it how tall these things should be. So I'm going to add a dimension with that same tool and I'm gonna click on this line and then this line down here that I just added, that construction line. So now um, I can click and I can tell it how far away from this bottom line, this top line should be. So let's make that, I don't know, let's make it 70 millimeters. So now you can see everything's turned black, so that means that everything's got a constraint on it. So it knows exactly how the shape of this should behave. It's all kind of fixed and locked into place now. Uh, I think that I can still probably, yeah, I can still drag this guy around, um, but I'm gonna leave that for the time being. So next I'm gonna add some fillets just to make it look nicer and it'll actually print a little bit nicer as well. Uh, but this time we're gonna do it within the sketch. So there's a button up here for that and I'll click a line here and then click a second line next to it and that'll let me enter in a corner radius. Let's say I want it to be two millimeters and you can keep going down the line and adding more line segments to that. I'm just gonna go all the way around and make everything two millimeters. There, now we've got some nice rounded corners, but this is still just a single line. I can't actually extrude anything from this. So there's a tool called offset that is perfect for what we're trying to do. So I'm gonna double click on one of these line segments and that will automatically select all of the connected lines. And I'm gonna press O on the keyboard and that brings up the offset tool. Um, and I'm still actually in construction mode, so I'm gonna click that to toggle it. And so now I can click and drag, and it's creating another line for me that is parallel with this line. And I'm gonna make this 1.6 millimeters. So now we've got our second line that runs all along here, but it's still, it's not filled in because it's just two adjacent lines. Uh, so I'm gonna press L to add another line. I'm gonna make it go from this point to this point and then this point to this point. So now that gets filled in as blue, and so now that's actually something that we can select and extrude now. First though, I'm gonna add another construction line real quick. Press L to bring up my line tool and go into construction mode. And I'm gonna make it go from this bottom corner here. And if I zoom in here, uh, you can see it kind of snapped to different things. A triangle means that it's going to a midpoint of a line, so uh, yeah, if I drag it over here, you can see that it kind of snaps here and adds a triangle. But this icon down here that appears when I drag it over here, that means that it will be tangent uh, to this curve. So I'm gonna click there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this line that I just added and press this button up here. What this will do is whatever line you apply this rule to, it will make it snap to be either horizontal or vertical, whichever one it's closer to being. So this is pretty close to being a horizontal line. So with it selected, when I click this button, it's gonna snap and make that horizontal for me. So now you notice this little line segment here turned black. So now everything is fully dimensioned. It's a fully constrained sketch. Um, it knows how everything should behave relative to each other, that kind of thing. And I didn't have to specify a length for this line. Honestly, this is probably kind of a weird way to set up these constraints. If I were really trying to make this a clean design, I'd probably go in and clean it up a little bit. Uh, like there are probably some ways that I could do this with only one construction line here and things like that. Uh, but this will work for what we're doing. So I'm gonna select this inner region here, press E to extrude it. I'm gonna change it to be a symmetric extrusion and tell it that I wanna extrude uh, 30 millimeters. So it'll wind up being 60 millimeters wide. And there we go. Now we've got a 3D shape uh, that we could go and print out right now. Um, but if I put something heavy on it, like a tablet, these thin pieces are probably gonna kind of bow outwards uh, when they have any weight on them. So I'm gonna go in and add a cross beam uh, from the back to the front to make it a little bit stronger and kind of hold that piece together. So I'll open up my sketch here again. I'm gonna create a line here and make it go from the back to the front. So it filled in that region, but that's not actually what I want. I want another line parallel to this one. So I'm gonna press O to make an offset for it. And let's say that I want it to be 1.6 millimeters. A good rule of thumb is to make the, the width of walls some multiple of the width of the nozzle on your 3D printer. So mine's 0.4 millimeters. So 1.6 millimeters uh, is a multiple of that, and it should make some nice strong walls. So 1.6 millimeters, these are not constrained. So just to make it a fully constrained sketch, press D to bring up my dimension tool, click on that line, click up here at the top line, and let's say we want it to be 30 millimeters away from that. 
There we go. So I'll press finish. And hey, where's that crossbeam that I just added? Well, if we open up this extrude operation here on the timeline, I've got everything except for that region that I just added selected. So I can go ahead and hold down command on a Mac. I think it's probably control on a Windows machine and then click that region to add it to what gets extruded there. Let's add a couple of fillets. I'm going to press F to bring up that tool. I'll select these inner edges here. This doesn't have to be super precise. Let's see, maybe one and a half millimeters looks pretty good. And then I'm going to add another fillet operation. Only this time I'm going to select this edge, this guy right here, this one, and this one. Let's make those like three millimeters. That looks pretty good. So that'll be much stronger than it was initially and it just looks a little bit nicer as well. So now when you want to export it to actually print something out, if I expand the bodies on the project tree, so I can right click on that and click save as STL. I'm going to hit OK. I'll go ahead and save that. And so now you can load up the exported STL file in your slicer of choice and print it out. So this next example is quite a bit more complicated. There are a lot more steps to it, uh, but it's not too bad, so hang in there. Now, when you're designing something around an existing part like a Raspberry Pi, uh, you might be tempted to pull out your calipers and start taking measurements and base your design on those. You can do that if you want, and I do that all the time with more obscure parts, but when it's something as popular as a Raspberry Pi, there's a really good chance that someone else has already done the hard part for you. So there are a couple of really good resources that I wanna show you, and the first one is called GrabCAD. So you can go here and type in whatever you're looking for. And a lot of times you can find really accurate models for whatever you're basing your design around. But a couple of tips for finding stuff and downloading stuff from GrabCAD. Uh, the first thing is just to keep an eye on how many downloads and how many thumbs up each design has. Uh, usually the more popular it is, the more accurate that model is. The other thing to watch out for are the file types that are included in the download. Some of them only have STL files, which you are able to import and use in Fusion 360, but they're not nearly as easy to work with as some other file types. So try and find a design that has either a step file or even better yet, a Fusion 360 export that you can then import and use in your project. So this one looks pretty good. Uh, you can even load it up in a 3D viewer here to get a better look at it. But yeah, this looks like it'll work great. Another resource that I wanna make sure that you see uh, is from Adafruit. They've actually got a GitHub repository uh, with CAD files for a bunch of their parts that you can buy on their shop. I mean, look at all this stuff in here. It's super handy. Uh, so you can download them directly from here and then import them into your projects. So if you're working on a project based around one of their parts, it makes it super easy to do that and build shells around them or integrate them into an existing design. So back in Fusion 360, uh, I've got a new design up here and you actually need to save it before you can import models to use in it. Okay, so now let me move my window down here just a little bit. In the file menu, uh, you can click upload and then you can drag the file that you just downloaded here. Go ahead and click upload. Press this button up here to show your different designs, your different projects. And now you can right click what you just uploaded and press insert into current design. So you can move it around if you want to. I'm just gonna leave it where it said it. Uh, press okay, and there we go. So this is still my Raspberry Pi case uh, project that I have going, uh, but I've got this model imported into that design. And you can see it's got this little chain link there. So that means that if I make any changes to this, I could pull those changes in to use in this design. First thing that I'm gonna do is make a sketch and I'm gonna make it on the X and Y plane that it automatically added for me. And now I'm going to press P to bring up the project tool. And you can see as I hover over everything I could, I project those onto the sketch, but really all that I want is the green board here. So I'm gonna click that. And then before I hit okay, I'm gonna click the construction button over here uh, and then press OK. Now I'm gonna hide the Raspberry Pi model, and look at that, I've got a nice outline of the exact size and shape of the Raspberry Pi PCB. And I've even got points here for where the screw holes are. So first I'm gonna make the actual box shape that's gonna go around it. So double click one of the edges on the outside and it will automatically select all of the attached edges. I'm gonna press offset, untick the construction option here, so it's gonna add an actual line that I can use. You wanna give some wiggle room in there. You don't wanna have it be exactly the size of whatever you're putting inside of it. Uh, so I'm gonna add 
let's say two millimeters to it, and I'll show you why I'm adding so much here in just a second. And now I can select that, and it's really easy to select since uh, those other lines from the Raspberry Pi PCB, those are all construction lines. Uh, so I can really easily select that, and I'm going to show the Raspberry Pi, and now I'm gonna press E for extrude, and then over here in the direction option, I'm gonna do two sides. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this. It doesn't have to be super exact for what I'm doing. I'm gonna pull the bottom side down just to make sure that it's coming below all those pins that stick out the bottom. That looks about right. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and make sure that it comes up above those USB ports and the ethernet port and all that stuff. I've got it set to new body, hit okay. So there we go. The first thing I'm gonna do is split this and I'm gonna split it at the origin there. So up here at the top, there's a split body button. And now it brings up these options over here. I'm going to select the body that I just created as the body that we're gonna be splitting. And then here, it wants you to select uh, what you're gonna use to actually cut this thing in half. So you can use faces of existing bodies. Obviously that wouldn't make much sense here. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hide this body for now. Same thing with the Raspberry Pi. And I'm gonna split it on this plane right here. So I just click that and then it shows me a preview of what that's gonna look like. It's gonna split it where that red circle is. Press OK, and now you can see it added another body. So now I've got a top half and a bottom half. And so something useful that you can do just to make it easier to work with as you keep adding things to it, I'm gonna rename this to top, and this one will be bottom. Next step is to hollow those out, and there's a really, really useful operation for doing just that. So I'm gonna hide the bottom, rotate around and select this face here. So the operation is called shell. So again, there's a button for it up here or you can search for it in the search box. So now this arrow shows up and watch what happens as I drag this. You can kind of see what it's doing there. It's hollowing it out starting at the face that I selected and it's making walls that are whatever thickness I'm specifying. So I'm gonna make this 1.6 millimeters and there you can kind of see inside there now We've got it all hollowed out so the Raspberry Pi uh, can actually fit inside there. I'm gonna hide the top and the bottom and the Raspberry Pi and do the same thing to the bottom. There, so now we've got a hollowed out box. Next, I'm gonna hide the top and I'm gonna add screw posts to the bottom. So here's how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna create a new sketch. And I'm gonna do it on this bottom surface here. Next, I'm gonna show the original sketch that I made that has the outline of the Raspberry Pi on it. And so I'm gonna press P to project from that sketch onto the sketch that's on that bottom surface there. And now I'm gonna go and select just the points of where those screw holes are. Press OK and hide that sketch. So now look at that, I've got points exactly where the screw holes are on the Raspberry Pi board. So now I just need to make some concentric circles around these points and extrude them up to the PCB. So I'm gonna press C to bring up the circle tool. I'm gonna to center it, of course, at one of these points, but I'm not gonna put in an exact measurement just yet, and I'll show you why. I'll go ahead and offset this outer one to give me actually something to extrude up. Uh, but again, I'm not gonna add an exact measurement to it. Okay, so let me show you this feature before I go any further. If you click the Modify menu here and go down to Change Parameters, what this screen lets you do is enter in some values and give them names that you can then refer to elsewhere in your design. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna add a new user parameter and I will call this screw hole width. And I'm gonna make that, uh, let's say two millimeters. Now I'm gonna add one more and I'll call it, I like to be nice and descriptive with my names there. Uh, and I'll put that at 1.6 millimeters. Press okay. And so now, these dimensions, I can press the D key to bring up my dimension tool, click on this inner circle, and instead of typing in a number here, I can type in screw hole width. See, it has an FX in front of it. That means that it's one of those user parameters that I specified, uh, and it's got that value that I entered in on that screen. Same thing with this offset. I can double click that number and type in screw post wall thickness, and there we go. So the reason that you might wanna do that and the reason that it's so useful is because now I can go over here, add a circle, screw hole width. So now all of these measurements are based off of those values that I entered into that screen. So if I go back into it, let's say I printed it out and found that the screw holes were too loose or something like that. 
Now I could go in here and type in uh, 1.9 millimeters. And you see all of these screw holes here now updated. So incredibly useful for measurements that you're gonna be using all throughout your design like this. If I hold down shift and click each of these regions, now I can extrude those up to meet up with the Raspberry Pi. Press E to extrude. I'm gonna show the Raspberry Pi model here. And for now, I'm gonna hide the bottom part. Now, if I rotate and look at the bottom, uh, and then over here in the extent type, instead of distance, I'm gonna click to object. And I can click the bottom surface of the Raspberry Pi here. And now you can see that it's extruding those up just until they touch the bottom of the Raspberry Pi board. But notice it changed the operation to new body. That's because there's nothing for it to join with. So make sure that you show the bottom half again. See it switched back to join. And now we've got some screw posts. Now something that I like to do with screw posts pretty much every time uh, is add some fillets to them. So press F to bring that up. Select each of these bottom outer rings. And, and that looks pretty good. So that'll make those quite a bit stronger and they won't be nearly as likely to snap off. Okay, so looking at it, this probably actually does it for the bottom half. So what I'm trying to see is whether or not any of these pieces are bumping into this uh, bottom half of the shell. So there's a really useful tool that you can use to get a look at the inside of things. Uh, I'm gonna click this edge here, and then up here at the top, click inspect, and then go down and click on section analysis. This is something that I use constantly for getting a good look at how things line up. So from here, you can drag inwards, and look at that, it gives us a nice cross section of everything that intersects uh, that plane that I'm moving back and forth. So it actually doesn't look like anything is bumping against it, and, uh, and sure enough, looking at the Raspberry Pi itself, it looks like nothing actually extends below the bottom of it. So yeah, I think that the bottom half is actually good to go here. So next we need to add some holes to the top and some top screw holes. So I'm gonna show the top and I'll hide the bottom and then I'm gonna hide the Raspberry Pi as well. So now I'm gonna put some holes on the top where the screws will be inserted uh, and they'll go all the way through here to meet up with the Raspberry Pi board and then into those screw posts on the bottom. I'm gonna do kind of the same thing that I did on the bottom. I'm gonna add a sketch here on this surface. I'm gonna show the original sketch, press P to bring up the project tool, and then select each of those points where the screw holes are. Hide that initial sketch there. Now, these holes need to be a different width because you don't want the screws to actually bite into those when you're just trying to get it through those into the bottom part. So, um, I'm gonna add another parameter here. This one I'll call top screw hole width, and I'll make this one like 2.25 millimeters. Press C to bring up the circle tool, top screw hole width. Uh, and then I'm gonna offset each of those just like on the bottom, so press O to bring up that tool. And I'm gonna use the same offset thickness for this. And so now, first I'm gonna select the inner holes Hold down shift to select each one of those. E to extrude. Set it to object instead of distance and select this top edge there. And there, now we've got some holes for our screws to be inserted on the top. And something kind of annoying that it does every time that you do an extrude operation is it'll hide the sketch that you were just working on. So you have to go back and show that. Now I can select each of these regions. Press E to extrude. Show the Raspberry Pi. And again, I need to re-show the top half so that it can join up with it. And there we go. So now we've got screw holes that go all the way through the top, through the board, and into the bottom half of our shell. Next step is to add some cutouts for these ports along the edges. So first I'm gonna create a sketch on this end and rotate it so it's up right here. And then I'm gonna hide the top half. Now I'm going to project these ports onto this new sketch. So I'm gonna press P to bring up that tool again. And I'm gonna do these as construction lines and I'll show you why here in just a second. Now each of these pieces is a separate body so I'm gonna select bodies right here and select each one of these guys to project out. Now I'm doing these as construction lines because look at all this extra junk that it's adding when I project those bodies on it. These are the legs at the bottom, 
Uh, there's some weird bits that stick out on the shielding around the ports and things like that that I don't want. So I'm just gonna use these as guides to create rectangle cutouts that are much cleaner and easier to work with. Press R to bring up the rectangle tool. Now I just dragged it out here kind of arbitrarily, but now I'm gonna go in and actually line it up. So it looks like these dots here up at the top and here at the bottom uh, are actually perfect for where we need the cutout to be. So I'm just gonna drag those corners so that they snap to those. And then I'm actually gonna have the bottom portion of it come all the way down so that I don't have to worry about any thin pieces that I would bridge when I print it. You'll see what I mean here in just a second. Do the same thing with this guy. And now our ethernet port. Okay, so now I've got those three ports that I can select. I'm gonna hide the Raspberry Pi and show the top half of the shell. And I'm gonna press E to bring up the extrude tool. I'm gonna do two object like I did before and click the back side of the shell here. So it goes all the way through there. And then if I reshow the Raspberry Pi, you can see uh, those holes line up perfectly. Well, I may have spoken too soon. There are these tabs that stick out. So let me go back and adjust uh, where those rectangles are real quick. So what I actually want to do is I want to make this line come all the way out here uh, to the edge of this metal tab that sticks out a little bit on the USB port. Uh, I'm going to select this line, press that coincident constraint, and then I'm going to select one of these outer points here. So now that line jumps over there, um, and that's a rule that that line now has on it is that it has to be uh, coincident with this point that I selected. So now I can select this line and say I want it to be coincident with that. Now it looks like I actually need to do that on the top here. I should have looked at that a little bit closer before I did this, uh, but I'll make that coincident with this top one. Do the same thing over here. There we go, much better. So now it gives us enough room for those tabs to actually come through. So now I'm gonna do the same thing on the side ports there that we need to expose for the charging and the video out and the headphone jack. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of speed through that because it's exactly the same thing that I did here. And there we go, now we've got cutouts for our headphone jack, power, video out, USB ports, and our ethernet jack. So we're almost done here. I've got a few more things that I wanna to add to make it look a little bit nicer and work a little bit better when you're putting it together as well real quick. So uh, first I'm gonna add a chamfer to the top and bottom half. So bring up my search box with S, and select those two edges, and just kinda of eyeball it here, it looks like one millimeter looks pretty nice. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the screw holes uh, so the screws can kind of nest down into there. Oh, and one thing that I forgot to do uh, that I did on the other half was add a fillet on the at the base of these uh, screw holes here. So uh, hide the bottom half. And then I think last thing that I'm gonna do is add some fillets to some of these ports here. So let me show the Raspberry Pi in the bottom half. Bring these in a little bit. This is really just to make it look nicer. And the nice thing about having these really accurate models uh, is stuff like this, you can just kind of eyeball. You can just kind of look at it and see that looks about right. It doesn't have to be exact. Uh, but if the model that you downloaded does end up being pretty inaccurate, then that method of course won't work very well. And same thing over here. Oh, and it looks like, now that I'm looking at it, I didn't actually select the right edge over here, so... Yeah, okay, so I see what happened. When I extruded it, when I did that cut, huh, I didn't have this guy selected. So I'm gonna do that, but uh, watch what happens since we've got this curved edge right here. This, if I hide the bottom half, then you can see it's not actually gonna cut all the way through here, because I told it to go to this back side of the shell, which it's doing, but there's that curved part. So, uh, there's a parameter here that you can change. Uh, it's this offset over here. So I'm gonna give it an offset of, let's say, 0.4 millimeters. Yeah, that looks like it does that. And so what that does is it still extrudes it to this point, but it goes an extra 0.4 millimeters. And that's for situations like this where uh, you need to account for things like that. So you can see after I finished editing that the timeline kind of snapped back to the end here and it redid all of these operations. 
but this one on the end, this last fillet, is yellow now. And that's because I extruded another piece of geometry in that sketch. So now that corner that I had selected for this fillet doesn't actually exist anymore. So to fix that, I can just reopen that, hold down command or control, depending on which OS you're on, and select that corner now. And that should do it. Okay, so I think we're actually done. Now, I'll be the first to say that this is not the best Raspberry Pi case out there, but what it does is it demonstrates several really useful and important tools and operations that you can use in all kinds of different projects, especially if you're building them around existing parts like this. Alright guys, well I think that that was about everything that I wanted to cover and this video is getting pretty long as it is, so I hope that that was helpful. Definitely take a look at the blog post in the description. Uh, there will be some other resources there that you should definitely check out, along with exports of everything that I showed you today so you can open those up and follow along if you want to. Huge thank you to my Patreon supporters as always, uh, really appreciate you guys. You'll see their names at the end of this video as usual. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.